Uh, today that I do a little production breakdown for a track I did a while back called uh, Voyage. I thought it was a, an interesting one in terms of how I approached it so yeah I'm just going to go through it more or less instrument by instrument and show you how I did it. Let's go from the start. So here in terms of kick um, just got a couple of electronic kits pulled up from battery 4 uh, the f I've got two layers here. The first one is very, very clicky, cuts through the mix. Second one, a little bit more acoustic sounding, but gives a bit of body to it. Then at the start, we've got this little pattern. It's coming from a, a sine wave. Funnily enough, I'm, I'm using Absynth, and what, what, what happens in Absynth is if you don't load a patch at all, it just it just plays sine waves and I've got two of them so one left one right this is something I do quite often in this track it's the same thing it's basically uh, one's just out of phase with the other same MIDI region just shifted along like so like that. Then at bar five, this ominous sort of bass drone kicks in. Um, I use a lot of Logic's built-in instruments because they're so they're so lightweight on the system. So this is sculpture, and all I probably did was opened it up to the default uh, and just dragged the material over to here. So it's uh, very much like a nylon plucking sound. Uh, and that's just being held and triggered by an arpeggiator, which is on 8th triplet. So that just pulses in the background, creating this nice sort of 4-3 four, four, polyrhythm, I suppose, between the 16th notes here and the 8th triplets in the bass. Again with these cymbals, just pulled this from a drum kit designer actually, you can sort of pick a symbol and swap the sample out nice little syncopated pattern here and then bar nine things start picking up uh, so first I've got firstly I've got this drone from Retrosynth all I did again I just opened it up to the default patch most likely drag the filter down a bit but all it is yeah literally uh, two oscillators just generating the sorties 50% balance of each and then what I'm doing is gradually I'm bringing up the mod wheel and in retro synth by default that's assigned to vibrato and so that's just uh, pulsing at 16th making it go a bit crazy just building up that tension and that, that drone it doesn't move it just won't change no it's not budging and then all I'm doing is just bringing up the cutoff a little bit snare drums again just pulled these from battery sort of played them at different velocities in fact you see I'm using two two different samples there laid up together this is something I like to do I like to I like to with my percussion I like to play some of the notes loud and some of them really quiet like ghost notes and things get weird then I just went a bit had a bit of a stroke I think and I decided oh let's put a guiro in the percussion there we go it's panned quite far right actually and then on top of that what was that thing I had where's the cowbell here you are cowbell so these two things enter then I got these symbols as well
First time it's to two, it's two of them. And then the second time, it's three. This is just building more and more, more and more elements, more and more notes. And the ominous drone just keeps going. This is just me holding down like a chord of, of some sort, like a E flat chord or something. And it just kicks in, just kicks in sort of like after a beat and a half. One, two, one, two, and just again, so much of the stuff is just off beat. Just to sort of signal that it's about to change. I'm using quite a lot of um, live recorded percussion in this. So, like this tambourine, for example, this is this is a real tambourine, just recorded in mono with a single large diaphragm mic. And again, woodblock. I decided to double track this, and I didn't really quantize it. Again, always new rhythms entering in this track. And then on the right, but together, get this nice sort of nice width to the woodblock. Uh, and then I've got this little pad here. Again, I'm just using retro synths to generate a pad. Then what I've done is I've taken the same patch and I've run it through some distortion. So I've got two, I think I've got two distortion plugins here. Yeah. The main one here is this thing called Deck Wrecker. So there's this guy called Air Windows and he makes all these plugins and he's got this philosophy of not using a GUI at all because he, he believes that when we have flashy visuals in front of us, um, it distracts us and he just wants us to use our ears and so I use quite a few of his plugins on this track this is my this is my non GUI plugin phase where I swore by not using any visuals <laughs> pretty much but yeah this deck wrecker though it's got this nice buzzy quality to it and um, just automating that slightly as well so it sort of swells towards the third beat of the bar and then fades away a bit. And then more offbeat stuff still. Some triplets here, very fast triplets. Just to increase the craziness a bit. Now, um, that triplet pulse still going. This is like the remnant of the drone, basically. That drone, which started there, had been going on for 16 bars, still continues for another eight. And so really, we've kind of been harmonically stuck in one place all the way up until here, bar 33. Where suddenly, the piano enters. This is actually, um, so that I actually recorded my upright piano when I did this. I just I I went to Sheer Golds and I bought like a sixteen I think I paid sixteen ninety five for an upright piano. I just needed something desperately to practice on and do some rough recordings with. Uh I'm still using it for the moment actually. <laughs> uh so yeah, all this is just recorded in mono and then I just put a bit of stereo reverb on it. I believe at least. It's got a certain width to it, that's for sure. But if I take this reverb off, 
I'll take the E key off. You can hear how rough it is. <laughs> you can even hear me sitting down on the stool. It creaks. And when I recorded this, I I put the um I put the middle pedal down. And because it's an upright, that means the felt pedal's down. And so we get this beautiful muffled tone. Which with the reverb really sings. Very iconic. A lot of people are using that now. Niels Fram and uh, Oliver Arnolds, etc. Here I've got these sort of wood cracks. Again, this is this is coming from uh, the apnea kit and battery. Just got this nice organic like almost like stepping on a branch thing and even even up until here really we haven't really had any harmonic movement really that that, that f has just been grounding everything and it's here actually bar 37 that things start moving and then out of nowhere, just strings. Let me show you what I'm doing with the strings. So, um, here we go. I'm using contact for these strings. And people, people will ask me like, "Oh, how did you get? How did you get your violins to sound so expressive in this track?" And the answer is, they're not violins. These are cellos. So, ignore this. It's barely present. Um, These are cellos, but what I've done is I've gone into the mapping in contact and I've dragged the top note out all the way, so then you can play it in any range. And the, the, what happens is, when you speed the sample up, you speed the vibrato up, and so you get this kind of crazy, crazy vibrato going on. And it's it's much more expressive than anything you can generally achieve with um, normal violins and stuff. It's, it's just this crazy sped up vibrato, and it works as well because it's still it's still a cello, so I can get that body to it as well, which I can't with just violins. I'd have to pull up all sorts of patches. Using Superior Drummer for this, it's so well sampled, really good velocity layers and everything, big kick, and um, I'm breaking a rule here, I've got reverb on the, on, the, on the drums, including the kick drum, and I'm breaking more rules still because the low cuts only at 60 hertz, so some of the sort of rumbling stuff, um, yeah. It's bouncing around and doing all sorts of crazy things and it's carved out. This drum kit's kind of got its own artificial space of its own. With this, and the silver verb can be a bit metallic as well. And so by this point in the track, we've kind of gone We've kind of gone in a circle. Well, not in a circle. We've kind of gone to the other extreme. We started off with just electronic sounds, you know, just just pure sine waves, all this stuff from battery, and then gradually I started introducing these live recorded elements. And now it's a very orchestral thing. I think I think when I did this track, I was um, very inspired by the track "First Fires" by Bonobo because that has a very similar thing in the chorus. Let's find the chorus. Here we go. The string for the 
drums. Kind of not too quick. Big influence for me, Bonobo. thing in the drums. So I wanted to create like a delay effect basically. So we've got in the in the drums is this. In the snare. And what I'm actually doing is I'm actually I'm actually playing all those notes. Because um, rather than setting up a new track and having to configure the delay and automate it and all that rubbish. I, j I just play it in. I just play it in, literally. Right, we're getting up to the big section now. I've got these dotted eights which have been brooding for a while, actually. This j um, just, just a simple patch from um, ES2 I made. And then what I'm doing is... I'm bringing up the cutoff ever so slightly. But the main thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm playing with this resonance, giving it that proper like nasal, the mouth opening sort of sound. Go on, Logic. Like that. And then, like I said, I said I was doing this thing quite a lot where I pan things left and right, and they sort of bounce around together. I actually pan this all the way over to the right just at the end and so um, then this one's panned on the left so together dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, sort of ping pong delay but manual pretty much this is what you came for then there's, a, there's like a bar two bar silence yeah pretty much two bar silence but then that tambourine just sort of sneakily creeps back in those orga or organic wood cracks are there again. Almost like it's, everything's just gone quiet and it's like walking through the forest and you, you step on a branch and you make a noise. And then it just explodes. Just, it's like a drum solo, honestly. I used because the thing is, I used I used to be a drummer, and so like when I when I when I played drum parts in for my tracks, I I sort of basically finger drum on the keyboard. like that sort of thing and come up, I come up with my beats like that because and, and um, I've got my kicks and my snares all in one part as well which is pretty bad of me <laughs> really I should put these on different tracks so I can mix them separately but I have a bad habit of leaving them grouped together the thing is it's not natural for me to split them up because I, I, I used to be a drummer and I think in terms of four limbs and so I leave all this stuff together. And again, it's still got that weird space, but now it's going through the compressor quite hard. So I've just put Logic's compressor in its VCA mode. As you can see, easily hitting 10 dB of gain reduction. into some of these little elements here. So I've got this little cheeky roads thing. I'm using a lounge lizard for this. Lounge, lounge lizard um, can sound really, really realistic, but I think the trick here is a little bit of deck wrecker again. Oh no. Oh no, I'm not using it. That's no, it's not on. It's not on. No, that's just a bit of tape delay. No, that's not doing anything. No, Lounge Lizard is just that good. Totally worth the money. 
in my opinion. Dum, dum, dum. Again, off beat L. This drum pattern is just crazy. Lots of little triplets, ghost notes, the whole lot. It's a drummer's drum part. And again, this little thing, which was all the way back. Um, just before the breakdown over here again, it's just there. It will hold cold. And then we get to the big point. So, the same, aren't they? Pretty much. Just big thick chords. And what I've done is I've run it through um, this plugin here called Iron Oxide 5, which um, I use all the time. Um, it's a tape emulator. It emulates tape distortion. Um, and if you just want to distort the hell out of something, you just whack the input trim up, just like you would on an analog mixing desk. Now, the interesting part comes from the fact you can control the tape speed for the highs and the low frequency separately. So, as you might know already, if you, if you have a low tape speed, um, you don't have enough information to capture the high frequencies well so you get a, a steep roll off let's say you record at 7.5 inches per second or eeps then not really great for music 15 or 30 is what you want for music or even greater i suppose but for speech and stuff we it's 3.75 eeps or is seven and a half eeps perfectly good something interesting happens with the lows so this is acting as a high pass filter because because the tape machine was um, running at well it's on 46 eeps um, it serves like a high pass filter and the, the, the further I drag this up the more lows I'm taking out it's a very nice high pass filter as well and if I put them all back in loads of crunch loads of distortion just goes nuts. See the MIDI here if you want. Dum, 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 dum. And yeah, just making use of all those different samples that are available. One of the things you want to be careful of when you're programming drums is you don't want to use the same sample over and over again. If you've got three snare samples like I have here, then make use of them because if you just keep repeating the same one, you get the machine drum effect, the machine gun effect, sorry. It just sounds very unnatural. It gives it away straight away that it's not real. And this, 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 this piano part here, these descending chords, almost like um, played again manually, as if it had a, as if it had a delay on it, basically. I'm, a, I'm big into my house music and stuff, so this is, this is, this is so heavily inspired by a track called Mr. Man by Dusky. I'm just going to play the relevant bit. Oh good, I'm not going to the right spot. Okay. It's 
very wintry. Yeah, so you can hear the influence quite clearly there. Great similarity between these ideas. Uh, we've, we've just explored the, the territory of you know, the distorted realm there. And then we've had the sort of the, the live realm, which is all this analog stuff, all this live, all this live recorded stuff, these drums, which no longer are like electronic kits. These are actual sample drum kits. And then I'll just sort the hell out of it. So we've kind of, we've gone quite a long way just in this section of music. And far from home, you could say. Bar 71, just take you back kind of to pretty much where we started. So it goes, it goes full circle in the end, in a very strange way. Now with these Brutales, um, again I'm just using, uh, just using an old crappy library, orchestral library in contact to get these. But the thing I've done is pan them left and right. So if I open up the, in fact, what I'll do is I'll set one to be red and then I'll open them in MIDI and you can see, so the green ones are the bottom MIDI region, the red ones are the top one. If I put, show them like this, you can see they're taking turns to play the notes. So I'll split this between these two tracks. And what happens is it sounds quite cool in headphones, especially, it's quite pleasant, is you just have these crotales bouncing left and right. In the mix it's not so profound, but yeah, it's really nice. Let me get to the end. Oh, in fact, one thing, if you look at my stereo art, you might have noticed by now, I've got um, an instance, well I've got two instances of our Valhalla Vintage Verb on it and the reason is that they're actually off during most of the track and they only kick in, that, well it, they sort of fade in from bar 71 to the end where I do some crazy stuff. Um, it's actually fading in right here, it's not so obvious but if you listen to the kick, ah oh, there's quite a lot of like air and space to that as it just just before it fades away and when we do get to there I bring the first instance of the Valhalla Vintage Verb all the way up to 100% so now we might as well be underwater like I've put here underwater <laughs> the symbol So again, just breaking rules, and breaking lots of little rules, so I'll put a, a wet reverb on the entire mix, 100% wet. The funny thing is it's actually not one reverb though. We've actually got 1.5 Valhalla Vintage Verbs because 100 from the first and then the second one's producing another 50 and when you do that you're pretty much running it through two low pass filters at once and then making it sound more distant like if I take this off we can hear how this drone here sounds very simple sound you might even say it's a crappy sound um, I take this vibrato off okay as simple as it gets um, and then I'm just running it to uh, two instances of um, isotope vinyl because it's got this um, warp thing which is which is basically your vibrato you can tell it how far to go up and down and two of those sounded better than one I assume they might be on different RPMs actually that one's on 33 well, they're both on 33 actually That's how they sound without the reverb, but then 
Well, I'll put one on first. And here it's already low pass now. Sounds like it's coming from miles away. I'll put this on too. Oh wow. Now it sounds like it's coming from the abyss. And because it, because I've got it going through two reverbs, it's sort of a delay when you change note. It kind of does this weird thing and it sounds like an elephant or something. don't have any bass apart from this pad which I generated earlier. Again, it's just that distorted pad. Everything's just really distorted here. I'm using the um, input gain in uh, Isotope Vinyl to just distort the hell out of it. So you can see I've got 17 dB of distortion there and then on the second instance I've whacked another 5. So like 20, 22, maybe 23 decibels of distortion on this. What's that doing? Just more bass. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. There is actually one thing I've uh, definitely forgotten to go through. Um, it's all the way back here. But just one more thing while I'm here. Just remembered here. On this drone. One of the things I'm doing is... I said I had two oscillators on it. Now, um... I'm detuning them. Gradually. Which sounds really wacky. getting further and further apart till it's almost dissonant uh, and especially when it's a few cents apart what happens is when f when two pitches are off by a slight amount they, they phase cancel and you have this pulsing effect and as they get more as they get more and more out of tune the effect that that amplitude changing or the beating it's called gets quicker you can hear it sort of speeds up. It's almost like an LFO. So by the end of that, it um, would be beating by beating at a rate of 23 hertz. Because the uh, uh, no point point two three. Oh, I don't know. It depends on the frequency. It's how many hertz apart they are. You know, if if, a, if you have a, if you have a tone at a thousand hertz and one at a thousand and one, they'll beat at a rate of one one hertz, one cycle per second. Yeah. So that's another that's another thing that's making it sound really weird. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to do more of these 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 type of videos where I sort of go through how I made my tracks. Uh, I'd like to go through um, and explain how I did some of my piano pieces as well at some point. Um, I don't really upload that often, um, but I'm going to try and make an endeavour to start making a lot more content. Um, so if you want to uh, subscribe to my channel, um, I'm not going to spam you with loads of irrelevant content. I only upload when I've got something worth sharing. So please feel free to subscribe and keep up to date. Yeah. I guess what I'll do now is I'll just play the whole track all the way through for those of you who haven't actually heard it yet. So here it is. This is Voyage.
have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this production breakdown of Voyage, and I will hope to see you soon-ish.